Allah does not love those people who make partners with Him. Allah does not love the Farsiq. Allah does not love the ungrateful one. Allah does not love the sinner. Allah does not love the tyrant. Allah does not love the oppressor. Because the, the most sad thing, the most terrible thing, is that you should be deprived of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He does not love you. And that you do not have love in your heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this matter of unity, my brothers and sisters, between the Muslims, if you look and you examine and you think about it deeply, it goes back to love. Love for Allah. Love for the people of Allah. Love for the friends of Allah. Love for those people who obey Allah and follow His guidance. And that is where this unity springs from. That is where this unity comes from. It comes from this love that we must have between each other. And if I go back to that hadith, if I go back to the hadith that I started with, you will not enter paradise until you believe. Okay, I want to know, who wants to go to paradise? Hands up, who wants to go to paradise? That's all of you, right? Alhamdulillah. We all want to go to paradise, right? Okay. But unless we believe, we won't get there. And, and unless we love each other, we will not get there. Do you know, and the Prophet wasallam in this same hadith, he went on to say, and shall I tell you how to increase the love between one another? Of course they said, yes Rasulullah, because they, the Sahaba, they, this is vital. We want to go to paradise, we need to love each other. How can we increase the love between each other? And you know what the Prophet wasallam said? What do you think it was? Increase the giving of salams. Subhanallah. Saying, As-salamu alaykum. And you know what my brothers and sisters, it's one of the signs of the day of judgment. It's one of the signs of the last day that a person will only give salams to someone they know. They will only give salams to someone they know. But this giving of salams, As-salamu alaykum, may Allah, because that is one of the names of Allah, As-salam, means peace and security. Allah is the giver of peace and security. May Allah be with you. May the giver of peace and security be with you. And you should reply as you know, with equal, and if not equal, better is better. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And how much should you give salams? You want to know how much you should give salams? If you are walking on a path, you are walking on a path and a rock divides you and you meet each other again, then when you meet each other again, you should say again, As-salamu alaykum. You leave the room, you should say As-salamu alaykum. When you come back in the room, you say As-salamu alaykum. There are the etiquettes of who gives salams to who. The standing gives one to the sitting. The one that is riding gives the salams to the group that is sitting. These are the etiquettes of saying As-salamu alaykum. And the best one amongst us is the one who gives salams first. This is just something so simple, my brothers and sisters. So simple. Yet you find the Muslims, we don't say salams. I was sitting just now in Tim, just, it just crossed my mind this actually, it's a bit sad. I was sitting in Tim Hortons, the Canadian institution, which is now owned by America. Or they, what, the Canadians bought it back again? What? Really? Okay. See, one of, the, one of the good sides of the credit crunch, you know. It's like, so this Tim Hortons, uh, it's one of the nice things I love. When I come to Canada, it's like my mind starts thinking, you know, double-double. <laughs> right? 
I don't know, I wouldn't drink it anywhere else. I, I'm sure if I drank it in England, I wouldn't even like it. But here, I don't know, it's something special, you know. So I was sitting, and you know, mashallah, lots of brothers and sisters coming in, who obviously are attending the conference, but I didn't hardly hear anyone saying, Assalamu Alaikum to anyone. I mean, that just came to my mind now. I mean, I was as guilty. I'm th Why, brothers and sisters? That's not, you see a Muslim? Say Assalamu Alaikum and say it like you mean it. Because you will not enter paradise until you believe. And you won't believe until you love one another. How can we have forgotten this? This is the basic etiquette of the Muslim. When you see a Muslim, you should say Assalamu Alaikum. Umar ibn al Khattab, you know why he used to go to the marketplace, even though the marketplace is where shaitan flies his flag. Shaitan flies his flag in the marketplace. Yet Umar used to go there. Why? Because he could increase in giving salams to people. That's he used to go there specially, just so he could give more salams. A simple thing. But this is our deen, my brothers and sisters. A deen that teaches unity. A deen that establishes unity amongst us as one of the most important and fundamental and essential aspects of this deen. And the Sharia takes so many steps to promote unity amongst the Muslims. And it has so many things to prevent disunity amongst the Muslims. And this issue of unity is something that has been emphasized by Allah in the Qur'an, by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have been emphasized this importance of unity. And we hear people talk, and I know brothers and sisters, most of you, most of you sitting here today, you are sick and tired of disunity. You are sick and tired of the di different jama'at and the different hizbs and the different parties and the different groups bickering and arguing amongst each other about things that you perceive to be petty and insignificant. The people are divided along the lines of tribe, along the lines of color, along the lines of language. Even more absurd and even more ridiculous. It's insane. I think we Muslims are in a collective state of psychosis because we're proud to belong to a country that was a map drawn by the non-Muslims 40, 50 years ago. How insane is that? Zindabad, Pakistan. Zindabad, Pakistan. Pakistan is a country that was put there by the British. Maps drawn on the line, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Morocco, lines drawn on maps by the French, by the Italians, by the British, dividing us up into nations. And now we are screaming fanatically, rallying behind some flag that didn't even exist a hundred years ago, ready to fight for it and die for it. This is madness. This is sickness. This is something so far removed from what Allah revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's nothing but his beer. It's nothing but another form of tribalism, of partisan spirit. About which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever calls for asabiyah, Whoever calls for tribalism and whoever fights for Asabiya, for tribalism, then they call and they fight and they die the death of Jahiliya. They die and they fight and they call for the death of ignorance, the time of ignorance. Yet these are the lines upon which we are divided. Nationalistic lines, tribalistic lines, sectarian lines. Yet Allah warned us in the Quran, many times in the Quran, about the danger of dividing into sects and groups. 
Indeed, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as for those people who divide their deen into sex, the meaning of which is, as for those people who divide their deen into sex, you have nothing to do with them in the least. Their reckoning is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the Qur'an, Allah likened those people who divide the religion into sects and into groups. He likened them to the mushriks. And indeed, it is one of the quality and the sifat and the attributes of disbelievers. That they divide the deen into sects. They divide the religion into group, into groups. Is each one rejoicing in the part that is with them? And this is the danger, brothers and sisters. We 